Hi everyone, it's uh, good to hear, see you all again and today we thought we'd do this out in the garden because it's such a lovely morning and also of course we're celebrating this week Palm Sunday and of course Palm Sunday is when we remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey so it's very much an outside activity with lots of crowds around him. Unfortunately we can't have crowds here today, I don't know if you remember those crowds which we used to do in the, in the old days as it were. Uh, isn't it strange now when you watch a film or you may be an old news item on TV and you see everyone happily strolling around together with no thought whatsoever that they may need to socially distance from one another. It seems like looking into a different world to all of us where people in the past were herded together at football matches, maybe shared a meal together in a packed restaurant or just rubbed shoulders in the local shopping mall without even casting a thought about what they were doing. Now it seems our streets are empty with only the occasional person observing their hours of fitness to be seen out there. Uh, wearing a, a face mask no longer brings derision from people and I can even cross Norton Road North in the rush hour at the moment. Isn't that wonderful? Social distancing, however, I have to say I feel is unnatural for us, despite it recently becoming the norm. No wonder some of us may be feeling slightly isolated. We like to live in groups. We live in villages, we live in towns, maybe even in cities. People team around us wherever we are. It's the way we like it. No man is an island, John Donne once wrote, and I think he was very right. As humans, we were made to relate to those around us. It's why Adam was happiest when he found Eve. Jesus' ministry is constantly amongst crowds. Whole communities flock to see him for his teaching. From Zacchaeus clambering up a tree just to get a good look, to packed beaches forcing Jesus into a boat to preach to 5,000 people finding themselves stranded on top of a mountainside. Jesus is surrounded, it seems, by crowds. His message is one that brings people and communities together. And that is never more palpable than on Palm Sunday, when the crowds jostle with one another to lay down their coats and palms and proclaim that he is their king no social distancing whatsoever. At last, following after all that teaching, that preaching and healing, here is a crowd willing to acknowledge and treat him as their king. It's what royalty does. I can remember being at the royal wedding of William and Kate and people flocking up the mall in their thousands just to get a peek. A king needs a platform. A king needs an audience and a king needs to be seen, he needs to be visible. And that high-vis pro proclamation of a king is what normally we do here at Norton on Palm Sunday, when we don our robes, grab a palm, and we walk the length from, from St Nicholas's down to St George's, sometimes I have to say to the bemusement of some passers-by. Yet, in the midst of all this clamour that's going on, on Palm Sunday, something's wrong. Jesus is on a donkey. This very public display of kingship is also a very public display of a different kind of kingship, a humbling kingship devoted to serving others rather than being served. Jesus' campaign manifesto is not, I will make you rich and powerful, but you will always have the poor. In his kingdom, it is the poor who we raise up. They are our king, the ones we serve. That's not a message all people in that crowd that day wanted to hear. No wonder many, including the elders and the high priests, began social distancing themselves from him, making the cross almost an inevitability. Jesus' public message to all of us is, judge your community in which you live not by how rich you are, but how you treat the poor, the vulnerable and the needy. He was right, we will always have the poor. And that's what we've been doing in this community since the outbreak of this epidemic. 
we have witnessed an amazing outpouring of God's kingdom, of people volunteering to help the vulnerable in our community. And it has been the people we have reached have, have humbled us as well. What can you say to an elderly man who's been worried and depressed about how he's going to get his shopping and then cries when you offer to get it for him? How do you respond when a person you ring says you're the first person they've spoken to that week and is just amazed that you would want to speak to little old them? This is donkey riding for Christ. But if we have the poor, we also have to understand what treasure it is we bring to them. It's not the pint of milk or the loaf of bread left on the doorstep, although they are very welcome. It's the love of Christ King that brings that delivery to the door and alleviates the burden of worry and fear. That milk and that bread will be quickly forgotten when eventually we do get back to normal. But the memory of love and service, well, that will last. As Isaiah once said, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. This is the love that brings communities together, the love that binds up wounds and relieves the burdens of worry and fear. This is the love that doesn't rust and wear away like an old garment, but lasts forever. So let our feet be those messengers for Christ's kingdom at this time. Let us serve those in need as our king. And may we serve another king too, one who comes to us humbly and riding on a donkey. My prayers are with you at this time.